Okay, uh, so we'll get started. So in the previous lecture, we talked about how do you design control strategy when there is disruption in the network. And one of the models for disruption we assumed in the previous class was that the adversary is dropping the control packets in an IID fashion. And one of the outcome of that discussion was, uh, let me write the system equation. Oh, I, I used new T, sorry. And then you have yt, cxt plus vt, and nu t was Bernoulli with a mean nu bar, which is nu t equals to 1 with probability nu bar, and 0 with probability one minus nu bar. And we had, what we, what we had mentioned was, you need to design a control strategy using a positive definite matrix S, which satisfies S equals to and after that I forgot what I had written. Uh, can someone tell me? Uh, minus nu bar a transpose s t. R d plus q. R r. No, right. B transpose QB. Okay, can I check that again? B transpose SA. Okay, I guess you need to make a correction. This should be B transpose SB. This should be B transpose SB. And then the control strategy, gamma star of X hat T would be minus B transpose S B plus R inverse. Was this the equation you had last time? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So this is your optimal control strategy. So just one correction. There should be S here in B transpose SP. It's the same S that appears here. So these two S's are the same. <coughs> now the question for today is, how do we compute this particular matrix S? Actually, the answer is pretty simple. You start with some S naught, which is, just pick it as equal to Q. And then you define st plus 1 equals to, like, I, I don't want to make it the same as this st, so let me write it in terms of k. So sk plus 1 equals to sk a transpose sk a plus q minus nu bar.
okay? So if you start with a positive semi-definite matrix, this matrix is always going to be positive definite, okay? So if, even if Q is greater than or equal to zero, this particular matrix is strictly greater than zero. It's strictly positive definite matrix. And so you get, starting from a positive semi-definite or a positive definite matrix, you get a sequence of positive definite matrices. And then the question is, when would the sequence converge? So, when, so one thing that is obvious by looking at this expression is that if this sequence SK converges, it must be the same as this particular S because it would satisfy this equation with equality. So now the question is, when would this SK converge to some steady state matrix, positive definite matrix? Well, the answer is, actually it's a very complicated computation, but the answer came, I think, in a series of papers between 2004 to 2007. And the final answer is as follows. Depending on A, B, Q, R, all these matrices, there exists a critical probability nu C. And so if nu bar is greater than nu C, SK converges to some steady state matrix capital S. If nu bar is less than nu C, SK goes to an infinite matrix. So this is known as a critical threshold. Okay, so remember that nu bar is always between zero and one. Okay, so you have, you can, depending on what the adversary is trying to do, uh, nu bar is always going to be between zero and one. And there is a threshold, there is a critical threshold probability so that if the packet drop is so remember, packet drop happens with probability one minus nu bar. So if the packet drop happens more frequently than one minus nu C, this SK is going to go to infinity, which means that there is no strategy which is going to stabilize the system or get it to the equilibrium state. On the other hand, if the packet drop is less frequent, or the, the probability of packet passing through the channel is more frequent, then there is a convergence of this matrix S, in which case you will always be able to find a strategy which is going to optimize the system and uh, you will be close to the, I mean, you will be within some ball around the equilibrium. So you want to follow the center of the lane and you won't really be at the center of the lane, but you will be somewhere close to the center of the lane asymptotically. So, so going back to the example, the example was that the adversary is dropping the packets going from the steering angle computation to the wheel. So somewhere in the middle, adversary is dropping the packet and the goal is to stay close to the center of the lane, okay? So there's a critical probability uh, oh, and, and the setting was you are on a curved road. So you are on a road that curves like this. And here is your vehicle. And this is the center of the lane. And you want to be as close to the center of the lane as possible. So this is an unstable system because the spectral radius of A is going to be greater than zero. Sorry, greater than one. So it's an unstable system. And in this case, the steering angle will have a critical probability so that if your packet drop happens with higher probability than the critical probability, so the critical probability will be one minus nu C for packet drop. So if packet drop happens at a higher rate, 
your car will go out of the road. On the other hand, if packet drop happens at a lower rate, you have a way to come up with the steering angle so that you will be as close to the center of the lane as possible. Okay, you will be within some vicinity. So sometimes you will be on this side, sometimes you will be on this side, but at least you won't go out of the road. So that's the theory of how should you behave if the adversary is dropping packets in the channel. Any questions so far? Right, so critical threshold is defined through a solving a complicated semi-definite optimization problem, and that's given in this paper, 2007 paper, but it's fairly complicated and involved calculation to compute the critical threshold. But in your assignment, you have to do it by trial and error. So just pick a threshold very low, like 0 0.05, and see what happens to the system, and then pick a threshold 0.5, not threshold, sorry. Pick a probability new bar 0 0.05, pick 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and see how the system is behaving under those situations. Any question? Great question. So not really, because when you pick, new bar has to be the actual uh, probability of packet drop. So you can, of course, you'll have to estimate that. You'll have to spend some time estimating what the packet drop probability is. And then based on that, you will have to design your control strategy. Uh, if you pick your new bar to be close to the critical probability, then your control efforts will be actually very uh, significant if the packet drop probability is like if there is no packet drop for instance so yeah so you don't want to you don't want to get into that situation and you want to be able to estimate new bar get a quick estimate of new bar and then use that to define your control strategy it's a good point The key thing to note here is, depending on the system that you have, so if the spectral radius of A was less than 1, if it was a stable system and spectral radius of A was less than 1, then you didn't have to, then the critical probability is going to be 0, okay? Um, but of course, most of the systems we control are not inherently stable. It's not like a table. So this table is inherently stable. It's not going to move if nothing is done to it. Uh, but most of the systems we, we observe on day-to-day -day situations, they are not really stable systems, and some amount of control effort is required to keep them stable, keep them in, within certain bounds. Uh, and so the critical probability is very, very important in those situations. You don't want the control packets to drop beyond a certain point, otherwise there is going to be a problem. It creates a big problem for real systems because if an adversary, so of course in some situations adversary will do a random packet drop, but more often than not, what the adversary does is a complete lockdown of communication system. And that's because they could flood the entire network with so many packets, so many data packets that 
no authentic communication can happen within the system. In which case, nu c is at actually zero because, because with probability one, there is no communication happening within the system. That's known as complete denial of service attack. You are just flooding the system with so many packets that the system gets overwhelmed and, and there is no authentic communication happening. So if that happens, then of course your nu bar is equal to zero because you are not able to communicate at all. So nu bar is equal to zero. And depending on whether your critical threshold is zero or not, depending on whether your system is stable or not, um, you know, you may get into a trouble and things might blow up. Now, when I say things blow up, typically there are so many safeguards within critical infrastructure that it won't actually blow up, it will just shut down. And sometimes shutting down is, as, is, is, is equally bad. So imagine if the electrical system or the electrical grid or some critical component of the electrical grid gets flooded by these packets and the entire grid shut, shut, shuts down. There is no light whatsoever in this room and, and whatever, like in, in other places. And that's going to cause a huge amount of economic damage. Um, at the same time, if it was a, at the beginning of this class, I had showed you this power plant that was blown up by DHS, Department of Homeland Security researchers. So in those situations, there is actually a physical plant that's going to blow up because of the denial of service attack. Uh, and, and that's equally bad because now there is a loss of property and perhaps you could, if there are people inside that place, then it's going to create a lot of problems uh, with respect to their health and safety. So no matter what happens, if the denial of service is caused uh, by some uh, adversary, it's going to create a lot of problems for the system. So you always have to uh, worry about that critical probability and you want to make sure that you don't have systems uh, engineered in a way that it's easy to cause denial of service attacks. Now I'll give you an example. Uh, we talk so much about the air conditioning system in the building, apparently five years ago, you could potentially control the building's uh, energy management system by sitting at your home because it was very easy to target that particular system for attack. Now, in, in the last five years, they have plugged that hole. So now you cannot attack the system because it's insulated from the outside world. Okay, so the building control system now in OSU, this is OSU specific, by the way, this is not, it may not be in other places. So in OSU's building management system, the data can only go out of the system, but it cannot come back. It doesn't have a receiver. You know, so that's the architecture where there is no possibility of denial of service attack because the data, you cannot put the data onto the network that controls this entire building thermal management system. So that's an architecture uh, uh, that you need to design at the very beginning, at the time you're designing the system. Because if you allow the data to enter the system, then you allow adversaries to send information to the system, which may be spurious information. I'm just sending 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 to the network, but that's causing a denial of service attack in the network. So I I'm pretty sure this would be the case in all the banking system. It's the case in all the targets and Walmarts and whatever. So you cannot really, you can, you, you can pull data from the HVAC system to the outside world, but you can't send data to the HVAC system. And, and you know, this is known as what is, this is called what is known as secure by design because you are preventing the adversary from disrupting the network which is controlling the whole, which is being used to control the entire system. So just something to think about, you know, architecture is very important, how you design the entire system. And sometimes there is a trade-off with respect to cost, or sometimes there is just an intelligent design. There is no trade-off, you know, it's just an intelligent design and you will prevent an adversary from causing any damage. I'm not quite sure what happens in nuclear power plants, by the way. So 
it's a very very highly unstable system it can in fact cause devastation within a matter of a couple of seconds so i don't know whether there is connectivity or no connectivity or how do they manage their data sets and how do they do monitoring and control i just don't know and i'm pretty sure nobody else knows except those who actually work at the nuclear power plant so it's probably a highly classified stuff but yes that's a or maybe if you go to the nuclear engineering they'll tell you how that is done but uh, but yeah in those cases you don't want to create a situation where the adversary can flood the network with packets which doesn't mean anything it's just gibberish packets but it causes denial of service at the controller's end so of course we talked about a lot of examples uh, but the car example still troubles me you know because if everything is being controlled by a uh, computer within the car which is what autonomous cars point of like uh, that's their usp unique selling point is that it it's going to drive itself i actually worry about the security of that entire system and nobody has been able to answer my question so far like what how how are they going to create the 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 architecture so that no external entity can cause denial of service attack within the in car network i don't know how that's going to happen in the future okay any question so far no okay so we talked about uh, packet drops at the controllers end now i am going to talk about packet drops packet drop at the uh, at the sensor level so the control signal is going through without any problem but the observations are dropping in the network so how do you do now the problem is not of control but the problem is of estimation how do you estimate the state how do you compute this x hat t from all the information that is available at the adversary so that is covered in this handout that i have given to you so here is what i am going to do uh, i have been using consistent notation so far in the class but now this handout has a completely different set of notation so what do you want me to do do you want me to stick to this notation or do you want me to stick to the notation in the handout you can of course do the mapping uh offline but uh, i want to hear what your thoughts are do you want me to stick to the notation used here or used in the handout here okay let's stick to the notation here uh so wt mean zero variance sigma w vt mean zero sigma v and let me assume that yt is in rm so there are n states xt is in rn and yt is in rm and nu t is actually a matrix nu t1 no nu 1t and nu mt it's a diagonal matrix with the diagonal entries being nu 1t all the way up to nu mt and nu it is given by this expression and nu bar i and let me call nu bar oh i need to maybe call it a matrix what matrix should i pick 
PSKL I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to come up with a notation for a matrix. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. H, have we used H so far? H, I don't think we have used H. Let me use H. New bar one new bar m zero zero okay so this is the diagonal matrix with the average packet drop probability along the diagonals and then zero elsewhere sorry it's not packet drop probability but it's a uh, one minus packet drop probability Okay. So the question is, what do we do in this particular situation? How do we come up with uh, uh, a, an estimation scheme? How do we compute? Let me write here. Question is, how to compute x hat t, which is an estimate of the state given all the information that the estimator has. So the so a question natural question to ask is what does estimator know So I want to compute x hat t it's quite easy to know that I mean, it, 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 it's, it's quite natural to say that, okay, x hat t should be the expected value of x t given all the information that the estimator has. But then the question is, what does estimator know in this particular situation? So here is what the estimator knows. So IT denotes estimate, estimator's information, new 0, y0, new 1, y1, new t, yt. So estimator knows whether the packet was dropped or not. And then, of course, the estimator knows the values of the observation. So if the packet was dropped, the observation is 0. And if the packet was not dropped, then you know what the observation you are receiving is. The, the reason why I am writing it as mu1 and y1 is because sometimes even 0 is a legitimate information. right? So I don't want to say that just because y0 is 0, it means that the packet was dropped because y0 equals to 0 is a legitimate information that might be useful for control. So, so that's why I'm separating the fact that the packet was dropped from the actual value that was received at the controllers, at the estimator's end. And now it's easy to define your x hat t to be expected value of xt given it. And then I'm going to use B T given K. Let me write it as X T given given K. And I'm going to write I K here. 
and p t given k is the covariance of x t given i k. Typically k would be either t or t minus 1. equals to p minus 1 or p in our discussion. Okay, so this brings us to the discussion on Kalman filtering which we have carefully avoided so far, but now we have to talk about Kalman filtering. So this way of setting up the problem and then writing what the information structure of the estimator is and then setting up this estimates and the covariance matrix of the estimate. This is the contribution of Rudolf Kalman uh, back in 1950s, maybe 60s. Uh, that's when this Kalman filtering came into being. And of course, it has been a very, very important uh, contribution to the engineering community because Without Kalman filtering, it would have been impossible to go to the moon, it would have been impossible for rockets to fly, and it would have been impossible for the vehicles to work, the modern vehicles to work. So Kalman filtering, or filtering in general, and Kalman filtering in particular, was, it has been very crucial for the development of a lot of technologies that we take for granted in today's world. Now the question is, this is a special kind of Kalman filtering because now the packets are getting dropped. The observation packets are getting dropped, so it's not the usual Kalman filter. And I'm sure you have, you may have read about usual Kalman filters either in other classes or in your, uh, in, you know, if you're doing some hardware project in your undergrad, you must have studied Kalman filtering for doing the project. Uh, but now we will talk about Kalman filtering for this specific case where uh, there is a packet drop at the, uh, at, the, at the estimator's end. So if you have noted all of this down, I am going to, I'm going to erase this side. Okay? Now the goal for this class is not to derive the expression for Kalman filter, there are papers written on this subject which are maybe like 12 pages long. So, so let's not worry about how to derive the expressions for these things. I'm just going to write the expressions from this, from this handout that I've given and it's also uploaded on, on uh, Carmen. So there is initialization x hat 0 given minus 1 equals to x bar 0, the mean of the initial state, and p0 given minus 1 is sigma 0, which is the covariance of the initial state, so x0 is mean x bar 0 and covariance sigma0. And then there is a prediction step where you have x hat t given t minus 1 equals to a x hat t minus 1 given t minus 1 plus b u t. Oh, maybe I should add u0 and u1 and u2 or oh, maybe not ut here. Yeah, so u0 all the way up to ut minus 1 are part of the information structure for the estimator. So estimator knows what actions were applied to the system.
u t minus 1. <coughs> t k plus p t given t minus 1. Okay, so this is the prediction of what is going to happen at time t given the information you have at time t minus 1 and the fact that you are going to take the action u t minus 1 at this particular time step. Okay, so I am looking into the future, I am predicting what is going to happen in the future based on all the information I have until now i t minus 1 and the control action that I am going to take at this particular moment that is the prediction step and then you have what is known as correction step any questions so far on the prediction step okay and then you have a correction step oh this is initialization So at time 0 this is how you initialize and then you predict and then you correct. So at the correction time you have already observed yt and nu t. So now the question is what should the x hat t given t look like? this is x hat t given t minus 1 plus l t So this C is the observation matrix, this nu t is the uh, packet drops that you have observed and then this is the prediction term that appears here, yt is the observation you have received and the observation could be 0 because it is the packet has been dropped in which case this is 0 minus 0. So if the packet was dropped nu t equals to 0, yt equals to 0, so this entire term becomes 0. And so the estimate has not really changed from the prediction step if the packet was dropped, if the observation packets were dropped. If the observation packet was not dropped or some of the packets were dropped, then this is how you are going to estimate the state of the system. Does that make sense? Any question? Okay, I just want to re-emphasize if the packet was dropped, this term is 0 because nu t is 0 and y t is 0. So this whole term is going to be 0. And so your prediction hasn't, your correction hasn't really changed from prediction. If some of the packets were dropped, so nu t is like 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, something like that in the diagonal 
entries. Then based on whatever observation you have received, you are going to correct based on the value of this LT. I'm going to talk about what this matrix LT, the, the uh, observer gain is going to look like. And then you will add it to the prediction and that's going to give you the estimate, the new estimate of the state. So in the usual Kalman filtering, this new t term is missing because it's always identity. You always receive all the information that you were expecting to receive. Okay, now what happens to the p of t given t? Well, that is lt mu t c and lt is given by the Kalman gain t t given t minus 1 mu t c transpose nu t c r tilde k. Sigma V is the, the observation noise covariance matrix. Sigma V is the uh, observation, yeah, covariance matrix of the observation noise. Sigma V, this is Sigma V. So Vt covariance of observation noise okay so as you can see in these uh, Everything changes in the correction term because of the fact that things are, uh, some of the packets are dropping. So we talked about how new TC appears here, but it doesn't really just appear there. It also appears in the reduction of uncertainty. So once again, if the entire packet dropped, new T is equal to zero, there is no reduction in uncertainty at time T based on what you had predicted earlier. On the other hand, if you received some information, so some of these diagonal entries of this new t is equal to one, so you received some information. And if that happens, then based on all the parameters, there is some reduction in the covariance, and that is your new pt, PT given t. So remember, ideally, you want your covariance to be as small as possible, in which case, you know, your mean is a very good estimate of what the reality is. But of course, because of packet drops, this covariance is going to become larger and larger as time progresses, depending on how many packets are getting dropped in the process. Now, you could have a very good quality temperature sensor and a very bad quality temperature sensor, right? And um, you want to have better and better 
information from the good quality temperature sensor because it's going to reduce the uncertainty you have significantly. So those are the trade-offs that you are typically trying to make uh, in designing these systems, which is, which is, you know, what kind of sensors you need to pick. Can you pick? So for instance, if I wanted to um, measure the temperature of my home using a Raspberry Pi, I can go online and I, I can find temperature sensors that has an accuracy of plus minus one degrees Fahrenheit. I can find sensors that have an accuracy of plus minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And I can find temperature sensors that have an accuracy of plus minus 0 0.0625 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So depending on the accuracy that is desired, I can pick a sensor. Of course, the more accurate sensors are more expensive. The less accurate sensors are less expensive. So depending on my budget and accuracy desired, I'm going to pick the sensors. And based on those sensors, the uncertainty will get reduced at this particular juncture. OK. And then this is your Kalman gain, or the observer gain, which is given by this uh, complicated matrix. And then nu t appears all over the place, which is based on the packets that were dropped, you are going to update your LT and uh, update the estimate of x hat t. So this LT appears here, and this LT also appears here in the equation. And it takes into account this new T that was observed uh, at time T. Now what do you think is an important question to ask in this particular algorithm, in this Kalman filtering, new Kalman filtering algorithm, which takes into account the fact that some adversary dropped the packets in the system. Can you think of an interesting problem that needs to be answered here? So my question is, what do you think is an interesting question to ask when the packets are getting dropped? So let's, let's, let's think about it. Let's look at it. So nu t is a stochastic process. Okay? Since nu t is a stochastic process, it turns out that your pt given t, which is a covariance matrix, also becomes a stochastic process. Okay, because nu t appears in the expression for pt given t. So now you have a covariance matrix of an estimator, which is a stochastic process. It's, it's, it's changing its value depending on how this nu t was realized over time, how the packet drops realized over time. So a key question to ask is, what happens to this stochastic process? Okay, what happens to this covariance matrix? So you could have stochastic process that goes to infinity, or you could have stochastic process that at least has a finite mean. Okay? It, it may have a covariance around the, around the mean, but at least it has a finite mean, so it means that the covariance is at least bounded with high probability. It's not going to go to infinity. So the key question here that we want to answer What is the expected value of pt given t as t goes to infinity? What do you think would be the answer to this question? So actually, the answer is, once again, you have critical thresholds for new. You have critical thresholds for new. And as uh, 
if nu t is above the critical threshold or oh sorry if nu bar or h matrix is above the critical threshold um, you are getting a lot of information packets and therefore this expectation value is going to converge and if you have more packet drops then this estimation is going to go to infinity there are a lot of conditions involved so i'm not writing the exact expression but depending on this matrix a b sigma w sigma v and all those other terms there are critical probabilities and if you are getting more packets your estimator will converge and the covariance matrix will be bounded and depending on some uh, and if your if the number of packets you are receiving is less than the critical probability then this is going to diverge and your estimator will have no what happens when you have infinite covariance in your estimate your estimate is of no point you know so you always want your estimator the covariance to be small and so if covariance is going to infinity there is no hope of being able to control the system reliably because your estimate of the state is all wrong so that's all i have for estimation over lossy network so we have talked about uh, what happens when there is a denial of service attack in the channel that's connecting the controller to the actuator that was the subject of previous class and what happens when the channel is facing a denial of service attack when there is a attack from the in the communication channel going from sensor to the controller or sensor to the uh, estimator typically estimator sit along with controller they are on the same microcontroller um so so that's why i'm saying that the estimator and controller would 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 uh, not get the information from the sensor if there is a denial of service attack in the feedback channel so we talked about those response schemes uh in this case the response is updating the estimator based on the denial of service based on the attack that you are observing um in the next class we are going to talk about oh the next class is going to be uh when you can ask all sorts of matlab questions from johnny on the assignment 3 stuff so johnny will be in class once again we'll have a similar discussion as we had in the previous class and he will answer all the matlab questions regarding assignment 3 so please uh, come prepared with the matlab questions and there is also a session at from 5 to 6 pm on wednesday that johnny is again going to be available for offline students students who are not in person but certainly you are feel free to join if you have further questions you can answer those questions at that time wednesday 5 to 6 pm as well um uh, on friday's class we are going to talk about sensor selection problem so if some of the sensors have gone bad how do you pick which sensors to pick for doing the estimation so we'll talk about that on on friday so thank you yes Oh yes, very good question. You see this A transpose P T minus one T minus one A plus sigma W. So even if A is identity, you are adding sigma W every time. That accumulation is going to make it go to infinity. Okay, and if A is unstable, which means some of the eigenvalues are greater than one, then of course it is getting amplified, and then something gets added. You have to reduce the uncertainty. okay that's where the critical probability comes into play okay